All right, so this is a quick follow-up video to the video tutorial I did on analyzing a Google trend in Desmos. This one's gonna deal with modeling a Google trend with functions in Desmos. All right, so if you haven't checked out my other video, I'd suggest doing that very quickly. That's a very, very brief video tutorial that'll show you how to get an image in Desmos from Google Trends. Just a quick recap, you can do that just by adding an image right here. So what I've done here is I've added my popularity of Star Wars The Last Jedi over time and I got this from Google Trends. I've got my image here. What I'm going to try to do now is use my understanding of functions to model this trend using a series of different transform functions. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to pick functions I think are going to match what I'm seeing on my graph and this requires a little bit of know-how with regards to transform functions but I'm going to start with a very simple one. If I start at zero here and I just kind of move to the right I can see that this is sort of like a line that's sloping upward. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to graph a line. I'll graph a very famous line y equals x and I'm going to transform this line one transformation at a time until I see what I'm looking at on my Google Trend image. So I know I need a less steep slope, so I'm going to try something like a half, and you can see my line's definitely less steep, but you can see that's not even close to as little a slope as I need. So I'm going to make it even, even less steep, and I'm going to keep doing that until I'm satisfied. And you can see if I make a slope of about 1 over 70, I've got a pretty accurate model for between 0 and approximately 20 on my x-axis. All right, so I'm gonna use that as my first function, but what I'm gonna show you how to do now is restrict the domain for this function because I don't, I don't care about less than zero. In terms of time, that makes no sense on my model. This model is really only accurate approximately until about 20 on my x-axis. So what I'm gonna do is use these squiggly brackets and I'm just gonna key in that I only want that function to be the case when x is between zero and 20. And you can see here that black line now stops at zero and at 20 on the x-axis. So I've now restricted the domain for that, for that function. Okay, so the next thing I wanna do is I'm gonna scroll over and I'm gonna to try to generally model this trend between 20 and 27 on the x-axis. So I know this appears to be some form of exponential growth. I'm not quite sure what base I should be using, but I'm gonna I'm just plot uh, two to the power of x. You can see it does not appear here, and it shouldn't because two to the power of x starts way, way over here. So what I'm gonna do is use my understanding of transformations to move this function. And the, the transformation I'm going to apply is a horizontal translation. I know that that happens in the power for an exponential function. And I'm going to move this thing, I don't know, let's just guess and say approximately 20. Okay, so you can see I've shifted my function to the right by 20. It's not quite where I want it to be. Uh, let's try 30, way too far. So I'm gonna go somewhere in between. Let's try 23 not quite what I'm looking for. So you can see how this thing's actually too steep also. I've got too much growth happening. So what I'll also try doing is changing the base. You can see I'm just kind of going through making changes here. Uh, that's pretty close. So let's go with, uh, we'll go with 1.5 and maybe I'll move over, no, too far. So that's, that's very ap approximate. It's uh, not perfect, but I'll say something like that should work just for this tutorial. And remember that I, I'm not really interested in this model before 20 because I've got a pretty good linear model at that point. So what I'm gonna do is restrict the domain of this function by opening my squiggly brackets. And I'm gonna say, I only want this to be the case when X is in between 20 and I'm gonna say 27, right? Because that's where it stops being exponential. You can see I've cut off my domain there. And if I really wanna get picky, with these piecewise functions, what I can do is I can change this less than sign to a less than or equal to sign, which will make a seamless transition in my, my gap between my previous function and my next function. So that's just a, a quick little tutorial on how to use Desmos to model trends. You definitely have to use piecewise functions for something like this. For all you know, you could see something like uh, like a sinusoidal function happen after this, and you'd have to sort of insert like a new like a sine function and you know transform it up by so many units and so on and so on and restrict the the domain as I did earlier in the video. So I'm hoping this video was useful. Like I said, if you haven't seen the other video, check that one out because that's going to help you get set up with Desmos and Google Trends images.